But we wanted education that really supports the practical application of what our students are learning directly to the students' lives as well as for their professional work. And of high importance is to be able to offer affordable educational programs. So to support your health as well as your thirst for knowledge, Hawthorne offers two webinar presentations each month in holistic health and nutrition at no cost because we believe in your commitment to ongoing learning. Welcome back to Hawthorne University. I'm Paula Bartholomew and I'm just delighted you've joined me. We're going to go through a few announcements and then we'll have a brief conversation with our presenter, Dr. Minnick. And at the top of the hour, we'll begin the, the webinar on whole detox. And um, let's get started. I want to remind you, like usual, everybody in the audience is muted so that we can have the best sound quality possible. But uh, remember that we encourage and value your participation, so all you have to do is type in your questions or comments at any time during the presentation using the webinar panel. And at the end of the presentation, I'll pose your questions for Dr. Minnick. And um, there's, they'll also be putting information for you in the webinar panel. So anytime that there's a web link or a reference like that, you can be able to just cut and paste right from the panel and not have to cut down on note taking for you a little bit. And also a reminder that we're recording this presentation and it'll be up on our website under archived webinars in just a few days. Um, All About Alumni is a new online event that we're doing at Hawthorne and, and I have the pleasure of interviewing some fantastic Hawthorne graduates. This is a 30 minute segment that's followed by a question and answer and these presentations are airing live at noon Pacific time. It's on the first Wednesday of each month and it's a time where we're featuring our graduates who have published books or articles or teaching classes. They're giving keynote presentations and creating just wildly successful blogs. And so I want to tell you about this. We want to introduce you to them and, and be inspired all the way around. Uh, so tomorrow we're our airing um, Katie Carter. She's a nutrition consultant graduate. She's going to share her journey of weaving nutrition, yoga, and spirit in her small town. Katie's so terrific. She has so much to contribute. And Dr. Minnick, she, she's a graduate of your food and spirit certification program too, right? I know. A smile came to my face when you said her <laughs> name because I know <laughs> she's gone through the program. She's, she's a delight. She, she really is. And so I'm sure Katie's going to talk about some of the positive impacts that training had on um, her expanding her skill set too. So looking forward to that. Um, well, today, Hawthorne released our Master of Science in Holistic Nutrition revised coursework, and we've got some terrific student response. I'm really happy about it. I don't think I really have anything to say about that. I think I'm just patting this all on the back for everything we did, um, except these courses are just terrific, and so if you're looking for a comprehensive clinical master's program in holistic health and nutrition, I'm proud of this and would be happy to talk about it with you at any point if that's your journey. Okay, I think that's it for announcements. Let's move to um, being able to talk with our presenter. Hi, Dr. Minnick. How are you? Hi, Paula. Great to be here. It's wonderful to have you back again. Yeah, third time's a charm, right? This is number yeah. three. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. Uh, we have just a few minutes here, but I, I'd love to talk a little bit about research because I, I just so appreciate that your writings and your presentations are also packed. They're thoroughly referenced with current research. So it seems to be a point of emphasis for you too, as it is for me. It is, absolutely. You know, my, my background is um, more research than it is clinical. So I have a master's and a PhD in nutritional biochemistry. So it's, um, as, as I mentioned to you before we went on, I, I spent years in the lab. I spent years doing clinical trials. And even when I finished school, I continued to do research. So it's, it's a part of, uh, you know, I, I think it's part of the process of being a nutrition professional. I do too. Do you have... Um... I think we have to, to be able to stay current and so many yeah. things. But um, do you have some resources, some go-to resources that you tend to um, frequent for research? For well, my go-to is, is PubMed. Uh, and what I do on PubMed, and I encourage my students to do this, is to set alerts. So if there are certain keywords that you want 
to know when something publishes, uh, then PubMed can send you those abstracts. And so sometimes I'll get them on a daily basis if there's lots of research or um, other times maybe it's once a week. But it really does keep me on the pulse so I don't have to be in the database just continuing to search. So I think you know that for all scientists and clinicians, that's the hub. That's where we all need to be. Thank you. That's a great tip. Uh, it took me a while to, to figure that one out. <laughs> Oh, because <laughs> I was the one always hunting, you know. <laughs> well, there's Google Scholar. You know, some people can find um, articles, especially if they don't have access to getting full PDFs of articles. You know, Google Scholar is another good repository where you can put in terms and see what comes up. But really and truly, PubMed is the ultimate. That's what all um, people go to uh, that are in the area of science, medicine, and other diverse areas of science too. So. What concerns do you have about um, recent reliability and, and unreliability of research that's up med? And well, you know, you always have to look. For example, just some months ago, I came across all these very interesting articles about potatoes. And it was health benefits of potatoes, phytochemicals in potatoes. And it was almost like there was a separate section of one of the nutrition journals all around potatoes. <laughs> so I got a little bit suspicious, right? So I. I look at the abstract and I can see that the people that were publishing uh, were actually from some association that was connected to a potato type of industry. Uh -huh. So, you know, you always have to take into consideration who is publishing the article and how that article was funded. Uh, the, you know, if you look at the research and what they did and, and that has to be disclosed. So, you know, you have to then take those articles with a grain of salt, at least I do, because of course, people that are speaking on behalf of uh, a potato type of an association or industry are going to have a um, a different view than somebody that's completely neutral and third party. Mm -hmm. Very good. And what about things that are more controversial or or conflicting? You know, for example, we just had a um, Truth in Cancer series where where Dr. Russell Blaylock was um, talking about glutamine, and he said, you know definitely not to supplement with glutamine because it feeds um, cancer like sugar does that that cancer cells use two major fuels glucose and glutamine and and that glutamine is a more pow powerful stimulant for cancer cell growth and but for research for years we've only heard about the benefits of glutamine so what do you do when you see conflicting information like that com that comes from a reliable source well, you have to look at the type of study. Is it a cell study? You know, what is the information that that comment is based upon? Was it in cell media that glutamine was provided to um, cancer cells, and then we saw that the cancer cells grew? Mm -hmm. You know, because that's going to happen with a number of different things. You can put different forms of protein, and it's still going to grow. So you have to look at the the type of study. You have to look at the amount that's given. You have to look at the patient population that is being studied. One of the bigger things I think that needs to be uh, investigated is things like the microbiome and how that interfaces with nutrients that we take in because we actually create a lot of these secondary metabolites and that is what is toxic, not the actual substance. It's the substance in a milieu of, of things that shouldn't be there that, that creates that toxicity. Um, I think looking at SNPs, single nucleotide polymorphisms, and looking at genetics and being able to stratify people better in studies will help to calm down or temper some of the nutritional noise that we see in a lot of studies too. But we see this just like you mentioned with glutamine. One of the biggest ones that I always speak with students about is soy. You know, why is there such conflicting data on soy? Well, you've got the type of soy, the quality of soy. Is it fermented soy? Is it organic soy? Is it genetically modified? Where is it from? What's the patient population? How much was given? Was it the isoflavone supplement? And if so, was it standardized to diazine or genistein? Sure. You know, you, you just you have to go deeper. You know, it's it's really hard just to take one study like the media does and just blast it without sure. putting sure. it within the context of everything else. Well, if people want to know more about this particular um, conflicting information and controversy, it's up. Hawthorne um, adjunct faculty Trudy Scott has a really interesting um, blog conversation going on. So um, Alex will post this, but you can look at um, Trudy's blog at Every Woman Over 29 um, and follow this. It's, it's, it's really interesting what she's putting up.
All right, we need to um, get to the presentation, but I want to let people know that you've got a new book that's just come out. Your whole detox must be in your hands at this point. I want to congratulate you. Woohoo! Yes, I, <laughs> I'm thrilled. I feel like it's a baby. I mean, I've birthed this over so many years, and um, I'm actually just quite proud of it because uh, it, it just looks beautiful. It's I, I had it yesterday with me, and I was at a meeting, and this woman saw it and she said, oh my goodness, that's that's huge. It is a pretty thick book, I must admit. <laughs> I didn't think it would be so thick, but yeah, I, I think it's going to really help um, a number of people to, to get on track. It's very practical. I'm a very practical person uh, and it has a lot of great science. So um, yeah, I'm excited to talk more about it in this presentation and kind of the research that I've done and how I look at uh, the whole topic of detoxification. All right, and you've got another, um, your 21 um, full spectrum detox program is, is starting in March. Is it the 17th that you go live with that? Yeah, we start on March 17th and it's a 21 day program with um, some days on the beginning part of it as prep and then some days on the end just to transition out. So I always do this twice a year and, and this year it's pretty exciting because it's like a little it's almost like a summit because I've got 10 speakers that are going to be part of the whole experience with us. Mm -hmm. So it's um, there, there's a lot of great value in the program and it's always a joy to do this online with hundreds and hundreds of people. So we're going to have fun. I, I, I'm counting on I want to let somebody else have fun. You've been very generous here to um, offer somebody in our audience here um, to get a copy of your book and somebody to get a free registration into this 21-day program. Yes. I think it's incredible. So, um, so everybody, we're going to have a survey to fill out after the webinar ends. It's both an opportunity for you to give us feedback on the presentation, let us know what you liked, what you want to learn more about in the upcoming webinars, and for you to be have an opportunity to be selected for a copy of Free Detox or a registration for the 21-day full-spectrum detox program that's starting later this month. So thank you, Dr. Minnick. That's very generous. Yeah, I, I think whoever wins it, uh, you'll, you'll never forget the experience, uh, again, nor the book. And, and the book is connected to the, the whole program as well. So it's, um, I, I, it's just great because we have people from all over the world that are doing this. And so it's it makes for lots of dialogue. And as I was sitting in this functional medicine meeting last night, I was telling everybody about how there is so much power in groups. It's almost like I, it's hard for me to go back to doing one-on-one -on -one consultations because doing these whole detox programs with so many people, you know, people just help to support each other. And sometimes that's the biggest toxin is not having supportive community. <laughs> yeah. No, we'll get into that some in your presentation here. So I, I appreciate that. And you know, tomorrow when we do All About Alumni with Katie Carter, um, she's doing the the 21 day detox and I hope I win so I can get in even though yes, I'm, not, I'm not qualified to get in, in into the drawing. But um, no, she just says it, it, it's terrific and she's doing it again. So. I'm um, hopeful for somebody in our audience to participate too. So with that, let's go on with the presentation. I'll start in, in introducing this and um, just give me a couple seconds, James, and um, let me know when you're ready to, to go with that. Okay? Thank you, Dr. Minnick, for talking for a few minutes before. Thank you. Okay, for anybody else that's just tuned in, let me welcome you as well. This is Hawthorne University's webinar series, and I'm Paula Bartholomew. I'm the moderator for the webinar. I'm here with Dr. Deanna Minnick for the presentation on Whole Detox, Seven Colorful Steps to Transforming the Toxic Barriers in Your Life. There are many toxic programs, detox programs available, but not very many of them see the whole person. Usually they focus on which foods to avoid and and just talk about juicing or supplements and saunas, but Dr. Minnick has developed a very different approach, one that's as much about nourishing as it is about avoiding, one that's colorful and engaging, it's not depriving or demanding. And during this webinar, we're going to learn about how to make small differences in a whole body and a whole life through whole foods and a whole system way to arrive at our most vital full spectrum selves. Wow. <laughs> I love that. It was a whole mouthful. <laughs> it was. It was. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Well, thank you, Paula. Uh, pleasure to be here again with all of you. And um, 
I've got a lot of content here, so I'm just going to dive right in, and uh, you're going to see how Whole Detox got its name. Uh, the, the idea of holism, really looking at one's whole life and, and how that can come into a detox program. So first I just want to put this out to all of you listening about the word detox. I know that um, you know I've worked with Dr. Jeffrey Bland, who I would say in part is the father of nutritional detoxification. He wrote uh, one of the forewords to, to the whole detox book, and uh, the other one was written by Dr. Mark Hyman. But in working with Dr. Jeffrey Bland, I learned a lot about detox. I worked with him for about 10 years and worked on some formulas, some supplement formulas for detoxification, and I noticed that not everybody is very receptive to this word detox. There's a lot of debate and controversy around detox. There's scientific debate, which always astounds me because, <laughs> well, well, you'll see because I, I will be taking us through the history of detox. Um, but there's even some, some talk in the media about, you know, why do we have to do a detox? Our bodies are already, already doing their thing. They're detoxing. So these detoxes are just harmful. You know, the, some of them even go as far as saying that the detoxes are harmful. So I'm just wondering about this word, detox, and if we need to redefine it. If we look into the history of detox, and, and I did this, you know, I sat down one night and was really reflecting on, you know, why is there this controversy? And, and should there be controversy? And as I went through it in my mind, I started thinking about all of the different spiritual practices and even the health practices, kind of a parallel track with spiritual practices about cleansing. It's almost as though in every religion, in every spiritual tradition, there is something about cleansing that's involved, whether there's a fast or there's Lent or there's Ramadan or there's some time where we're pulling away from the outside world in order to go within, and even health practices. So what I thought I would do is just a quick summary of what some of those practices are. So what you will see is um, one of the things that I like to do, and again, this brings us back to the idea of the word whole. Why do we talk about whole? It's bringing together the yin and the yang, the masculine, the feminine, the ancient with the modern. And I feel like that's really my mission is to be the, the PhD scientist that also appreciates the truth and the threads of wisdom that are in a lot of these ancient traditions. Otherwise, you know, they, they won't be captured and there's so many wonderful fusions that are taking place amongst the ancient traditions as well as the modern science and I think that they're both valuable. So one of the things that I, I think about with detox and even with health and healing and perhaps it's because I'm married to an acupuncturist who thinks in terms of elements <laughs> is I think about the basic elements of nature. I think about air and smoke and fire and heat, water, oil, earth and clay and how these elements are used in the process. So it's not just that we're coming clean when we do a detox. I feel like we're getting closer to our true nature. And not just our inner nature, but then the outer nature too. And I've noticed that when I have patients go through a detox, they become very attentive to their surroundings, whether it's the microcosm of their home or their living space, or it's outside and their reactions to nature, seeing a tree, looking up at the sky. You know, there's something really elemental that happens. And I would even go further to say that the act of eating is a very elemental one. You know, we're fusing together all of these elements and making those elements part of our being. So it's almost like looking at detox from a very metaphorical, symbolic perspective. And, um, you know, that's, again, the whole picture, right? It's left brain, right brain. It's not just looking at the analytical pieces, but the right brain pieces as well. So here is, uh, if I look back at historical accounts of when people started to get rid of things in their bodies in order to be healthy or to be clean or to have it as part of a spiritual practice. We go back to something as old as bloodletting, right? You know, bleeding uh, out any kind of toxins or these microorganisms or whatever we thought that they were then, the humors, right? The um, having these bad humors within us and getting these things out and bleeding. Well, this is, a, of course, a very extreme measure, whether we're, we're um, 
uh, bleeding outright or having leeches or you know wh however that's done right so obviously we've progressed uh, beyond that I look at East Indian traditions and uh, if I look at Ayurvedic medicine there are so many layers of cleansing within Ayurvedic um, practices so Panchakarma is one where we look at the use of of oil of breath of so many of the different elements that come together by way of helping us to find balance and to cleanse and purify. Oil pulling is, even though we think of it as kind of a modern phenomenon, this really does go back to Ayurvedic medicine where um, we see oil is used as a medium to capture things like toxic residues. And of course, maybe they didn't have quite the scientific understanding at that time. But now what we know about these different toxins is that they're lipophilic. They love fat. So they're going to sink into fat. So it makes really good sense to be using things like oil pulling or having this oil, whether it's coconut oil, sesame oil, in the mouth. We swish it around for about 15 to 20 minutes. We get this really disgusting, foamy oily mess <laughs> which carries a lot of the toxic residues that may have been within the mouth. You know the mouth is such a great microcosm of the whole body. There's even data to suggest that the the mouth health or a periodontal health is uh, in parallel and associated with cardiovascular health. So oil pulling, something like that. Salt baths, whether it's um, Goodness, you know, all the different uses of salt, the drawing aspects of salt, and how different cultures used salt baths for cleansing purposes, whether it was arthritic pain, you know, maybe it was something tangential to toxins. Maybe they didn't think of it as toxins, but there was something soothing about having these salt baths. Uh, within traditional Chinese medicine, you have the practice of cupping, which is taking a um, as you can see here, kind of a cup overturned onto the body and having heat as the element to create this suction on the body. So you're drawing things out through the mechanical activity, the pressure combined with the heat. And again, it's pulling things. You know, what, what is it pulling out? Well, you know, there's, there are different energy meridians that um, you're working on in Chinese medicine. I worked with a Native American woman for, for uh, a number of years. And one of the things in the Native American tradition used for cleansing is sage, burning sage. You know, I think of me growing up Catholic. I, I'd walk into the church and what do I smell? Incense. You know, there's this whole thing. And now look at our fascination with essential oils. So it, it's really tapping into all of our senses, um, our, our smell, our sight, our skin. You know, there's a lot of ancient um, wisdom here. Um, I was in Sweden this past year. I'm, I'm part Swedish, and um, goodness, you know, in Scandinavia, saunas are just a part of a house. It's almost like everybody has their sauna, and uh, you know, they're they're not elaborate or anything, but um, they're they're part of the culture. You know, you've got these extreme weather conditions, and sauna, uh, you know, having these extremes of of heat and cold and drawing things out and in fact there's such good science on this now if you look at some of the the work of Dr. Stephen Jenis and Jenis is spelled G-E-N-I-U-S it's almost like genius but not quite uh, Dr. Stephen Jenis who is at the University of Alberta has done some really fantastic work looking at he calls it the bus study bus B for blood U for urine S for sweat and essentially what he has found is that most things come out in the sweat so we should really be focusing on, on sweating, especially when we have problems trying to get things out. So that means exercising to the point of sweating or, you know, if we don't have a sauna, what are some other ways that we could sweat? Speaking of sweat, you know, sweat lodges. I think, again, um, in a lot of Native American and other Native uh, um, Aboriginal cultures, the use of sweat lodges. And you know what's really fantastic, if you've ever experienced a sweat lodge experience, it's not like you just go there to sweat. It's a very cathartic, spiritual experience. And so this, again, is speaking to me uh, in, in terms of creating that whole detox, you know, something bigger than just omitting certain foods. Clay, 
yeah, that's one of uh, my favorites, uh, and I do talk about that with patients, you know, especially for skin rashes or joint pain, the use of a variety of different clays and poultices. I even think of, you know, back to the oils, I think of castor oil packs, pulling things out of the body for um, if there's inflammation. Wonderful, wonderful. And, you know, even if we look at Europe now, and we're kind of touring the, the world and maybe even several countries simultaneously. We look at Europe and the, the whole tradition of botanical medicine, all the different herbal preparations that were used for detoxification purposes. So getting things out of the body, pooping them out, vomiting them out, sweating, whatever we need to do in order to get things out. So, um, you know, again, that this has been acknowledged. And now we see that in our modern society in the form of what? Yes, these same herbal preparations, but we also see uh, dietary supplements have really taken off, right? And this is in the age of when we didn't have those types of things, tablets and pills and, um, you, you know, there were obviously tinctures of various types and, and other herbal preparations, but we've um, changed and, and gone beyond some of those formats. Teas, just even something simple as tea. There is an article that I'm wondering if uh, Paula can get to everybody. It's an open access article that I published last year together with a colleague of mine, Ramalee Hodges, in which we look at all the different nutritional actives for nutritional detoxification. And one of the things that stood out amongst all the different things, and of course we would already think of, well, cruciferous vegetables and turmeric and um, you know, even fish oil uh, came up in some of these studies. But teas, there were a number of studies on the different types of tea being used for hepatic detoxification. So lots of good, good data there. So here we find ourselves in, in the modern day questioning whether or not we need to be doing a detox and having this debate or at least some of us are in some circles, right? I don't, I don't think it is a debate. I think, I think it's pretty clear, and I think that if we're um, looking at it and knowledgeable about what's happening on the planet and what's happening as part of our, our individual health statuses, we would see that we don't all detox in the same way, especially with the genetic variability that each of us have. And that's one of the tenets of functional medicine is individual biochemistry. We're not all alike. So why is it that some people can live fine in a city, a very crowded, urban, polluted city, and have no symptoms, and then you have other people who travel there and get sick. They get asthma, or they have uh, issues with um, just not feeling well, feeling uh, low energy, brain fog. Right, So it's been um, estimated that we have something on the order of 80,000 different chemicals in the environment. So let me just repeat that, 80,000 different chemicals. So we have a lot more toxic burden in our environment than we've ever had before. And I don't think that this really surfaced until we saw Rachel Carson's book published in 1962 called Silent Spring. And so this book is about how birds uh, and, and the ecosystem of birds were changing based on certain things in the environment. So I think that you know that book was really great for setting the tone and getting people's awareness raised about the different toxins uh, in the environment. Well, there's no surprise that we do live in a toxic world. Um, one of the things I've been thinking about lately, there are so many different types of toxins, of course, but I've been giving lots of thought to plastic. Plastic is pervasive. It doesn't degrade very well. And uh, I live in the Pacific Northwest, and there's a huge island of plastic in the ocean. Uh, and it's affecting the oceanic ecosystem, the fish, and then it's going to make its way back into our food supply, of course, if we eat fish or even uh, algae. So. We, we've got a number of toxins to, to battle, and, and I think creating more awareness is really key for this, this reason. So, you know, you pick your, your, your favorite toxin here, but there are many, and this is only an abbreviated list. Many times when we think of a toxin, we think of heavy metals, things like mercury, lead, and arsenic. There is also a lot of data on POPs, and POPs is an acronym that stands for persistent organic pollutant, 
right? So these persistent organic pollutants are things like organochlorines and organophosphates um, and fluorinated type of uh, fluorinated and chlorinated type of compounds that don't have very short half-lives. They have long half-lives, so they're staying in the environment for a really long time. And in fact, uh, some of these pops uh, are being referred to as obesogens because of their impact on metabolism, really jamming up some of our metabolic pathways. Plasticizers, uh, and some of the ways that these different toxins work is through what we call endocrine disruption, meaning that they start uh, changing up receptors for hormones, and so they, they're kind of hormone mimetics, where they kind of look like hormones, but they're dysfunctional. So when they key into these receptors, it starts turning things on or turning things off in ways that are not conducive to our health. And goodness, I could go into uh, great levels of depth on all the different literature uh, in, in toxins. There, there's a lot. I'm really giving you a very high level at this point. And I think that that's really uh, what you need to know just in terms of justifying whether or not we, we do need a detox. So what do we have in the modern day to help us do that? We've got spas. People are now doing smoothies. Even my, my junk food dad, who normally does not touch anything healthy, can at least do a green smoothie every day, which is exciting to our whole family. Air filters. You know, you look at some of the data on all the different elements and what we're exposed to. I mentioned water in the ocean. Uh, water is um, a, a huge potential source of contaminants, and we're around it all the time. But something that I think is even scarier in some ways is air pollution because we don't see it, right? And it's not like with water, sometimes it tastes funny or, you know, we just naturally go to getting a filter for, for our water or the water in our home. But with air filters, these are less common. And there are some studies that are suggesting that these air particulates are... Well, first of all, they're associated, when, when we inhale them, they're associated with different chronic diseases, even ones like cardiovascular disease. And indoor air is, is thought to be two times greater polluted than outdoor air. So, you know, one small investment is, is just to get a very good air filter, at least where you sleep. I think that that's a really good idea, since you spend eight hours in, in one place. At least I hope it's about eight hours. <laughs> okay, so water filters, really important, of course, really important to get water tested. The different types of saunas that are available, uh, infrared saunas are becoming more prevalent and popular, and, and people are, are starting to get them for their homes now. Different dietary supplements can help us. So, um, and I, again, know a lot about that just because I was part of formulation of a number of different dietary supplement powders and, and different uh, tablets and capsule type products. So, you know, things to help the liver or things to help the gut. You know, there, there are a lot of uh, supplemental cleanses that are on the market. And so, um, you know, there's a sequence and a way to do that. And not for everybody, especially very fragile patients. But uh, fortunately, we have these things to help people that are pretty fragile and are more environmentally susceptible. This whole area, um, one of the things that I've started to uh, do more work in is nutrigenomics. And as part of nutrigenomics, which is the influence of nutrients on genes, looking at detoxigenomics. And I didn't make that word up. That is actually a word that, um, that we see in the functional medicine community, in the integrative medicine community in which we can look at the different genes that tie into how we get things out of the body. There are labs that you can get and order. Uh, typically this is more for primary care physicians where you can get a patient's SNPs or single nucleotide polymorphisms. These are just simply the gene variants that can alter how somebody processes toxins. You know, why is cigarette smoke really toxic for some people and not for others? Well, it maybe have something to do with their, what we call the cytochrome system of enzymes uh, that are connected to the liver and other organs. So I think that this is where the modern part of science is coming in and really being beneficial. I think we are 
uh, enamored with this idea in general in science. However, it has a lot of limitations, right? We can't just look at uh, patients as one enzyme, one gene, and have a very simplistic approach. We also have to look at the complexity of genes. It's much more than that. So with that said, contrasting the, the ancient with the modern forms of detox, I suppose I would then say to all of you, with all the different detoxes that are on the market and, and currently being used uh, in various clinical settings, how do you know what to choose? How do you know what to select? So I've looked into these um, in great detail, and uh, you know, especially when I was writing Whole Detox, and I wanted to understand what the pros and the cons were. So I created these three buckets, and, and one of them is that, that they deal with part of your body and not with your whole body. For example, you, you, know, you can buy uh, a liver detox supplement that it's only going to focus on, on the liver and have things in it like milk thistle. Right, very limiting, and there are even programs that just focus on on one of these organs, right? And typically, it's liver or gut, but that's not really the full picture of of the body, especially because we're learning about how everything is very interconnected. For other detoxes, um, and and I do see this uh, quite a bit in in various clinical approaches. We focus on what to remove from the diet rather than what to put in. So in working with patients for, for you know, 15 plus years, what I have noticed is that people are much more receptive to being told what they can eat versus what they can't eat. So a detox feels like it's a depriving, constricting e event that they have to move through, right? And people tend to not look forward to it because of that reason. So I have shifted the language around whole detox where I talk more about the nourishing colorful foods. Then the other thing is that, um, you know, being that I am a functional nutritionist and I'm into biochemistry in the body, uh, what I have noticed is that most approaches, and this even goes beyond detoxes, deal only with the physical body. And they don't really look at things like emotions or the mind, and this is another area of passion for me, is looking at the science of mind-body medicine. Uh, there really is something to it. I taught a whole university course on mind-body medicine and, and had the students really um, experience what I was referring to in, in, in these studies. You know, what, what were we seeing? You know, what is mind-body medicine? How does the mind affect the body and vice versa? So it's almost like, you know, in whole detox, what I tried to do was to take nutrition and marry it to mind-body medicine for a more complete scientific picture and also a more gratifying, fulfilling way to, to create lifestyle change. So, um, yeah, really looking at this, this new frontier of how we can redefine detox. I think it's time. I think we're of course in the, the 21st century it's time to look at things with new eyes because uh, otherwise as Mark Twain would say if you do what you've always done you'll get what you always got and I think that that quotes even in, in uh, the Dr. Seuss book right? <laughs> where you can't expect different results if you're doing the same thing every time so if we look at toxins um, instead of just looking at them as being a heavy metal or a, a plastic which surely those are toxins. I also look at toxins as any barrier to one's health. So that can be a toxic relationship. It could be a toxic thought, a to toxic emotion, a toxic job. That's one that I saw over and over when I was working with patients. Uh, I'd have them on detox programs and midway through they start questioning their job. You know, they, they start seeing the level of stress, and, and really feeling like, goodness, you know, I need an overhaul. I really need to pull back from this. This is not healthy. So detox is such a great time to just get clear on your life, to really look at what are the barriers. So just for fun, I, um, I, I have these seven. The, the number seven just follows me in, in so much of what I do. So I have the, the seven deadly toxins, which is just really a play on words here. But I'm going to take you through the seven main ones that I address within Whole Detox. The first one is uh, food-based chemicals. 
all the different things that we just spoke about, whether it's plastics, genetically modified organisms, we really um, do pay a lot of attention to food. That is first and foremost. The second toxin is what I call emotional baggage. So throughout Whole Detox, we do an emotion log. We have people pay attention to the different emotions that they're feeling and, and track them. The third toxin is limiting thoughts. And we have a lot of those. Um, goodness, you know, it's been estimated that we think somewhere on the order of 60 to 80,000 thoughts in a day. That's one day. Thousands and thousands of thoughts. And that most of those thoughts are repetitive and they're negative. Now, if we have those negative, repetitive thoughts circulating in our mind, chances are we are not going to be making healthy, enlightening, invigorating decisions for ourselves. Right? We're going to be down that, that downward spiral of, of despair or you know, having lots of fear and, and really increasing things like cortisol. The fourth toxin is what I call physical stagnation. So that means no movement. There's no chi, there's no blood, there's no oxygen circulating in the body. <clears throat> so this is uh, living a very sedentary life where we're not invigorating the heart or the lungs. The fifth toxin is, and I always have fun with this one when we do the whole detox program, is not speaking the truth. <laughs> you know, all the things that we say to ourselves, to others, I actually have people commit to not swearing when we go through the whole detox program. You know, swearing is just kind of uh, second nature for, for many people and they don't realize the, the energy of words, the power of what we say. And so what I just have people do throughout this time is to really become aware of things that we're saying or, or maybe not saying. There, there's a component of that too where sometimes we are, it's not that we're lying or swearing, but we're being silent when we really should be saying things. So that's always a fun one. Uh, the sixth one is what I call, and it really encompasses a lot of different things, but uh, I call it a lack of vision. So it might mean a lack of good quality sleep and lack of good quality dreams. We're not tapping into our imagination. We're not connecting to our intuition. We really have no vision for our lives. And that's why I bring in this, what I call the guided visualization component of whole detox. So every day of the, the detox program, there's a visualization that aligns to the theme of the day. I do think it's really important to have vision. In fact, this is, whenever I, I do surveys at the end of the programs, I have people tell me what they liked and what they didn't like, and they always love the food. The food is always number one because they love all the colorful recipes. The second thing that they like is, is actually the visualizations. So um, I think that they're fun. You know, some people are more visual than others, so it's easier to do them. But uh, they're really important to, to engage in that sense of visualizing our outcome. And then the last toxin, I, in some ways, think that this is the most important one, is that uh, there's a lack of connection with life, purpose, and meaning. It's really easy to change somebody's diet, but it's much more difficult to help somebody to not feel so depressed, not feel in a slump, really feel like they have no sense of purpose and meaning to their lives. And so this is what I align to what I call the spirit. Uh, within the seven systems of health. So that's that's toxin number seven. So the the solution for for that one is you know some quiet time, some connecting time into uh, you know really looking deeper at that sense of meaning and purpose. What does that mean for you? Some people have come out of the whole detox programs uh, having a better sense of their calling. You know what they need to do. They really like the whole work in, in health and healing and some of them get really inspired to even change courses in, in their profession. So you know that's always fun to see. So I redefined toxin. In redefining detox I have been talking about that already a little bit but I would say you know even though a detox tends to be done seasonally at the, the change of the seasons which is why we're going to do ours um, at, uh, at the spring equinox, at least in the northern hemisphere. And then I also do them in September, October when we go into autumn. 
I see it as a step towards lifestyle change. And, and when we emerge from the whole detox program, what I ask people is, what is the one thing? What is the one thing that you're going to take with you into your lives? How is this going to ripple through everything that you do and say and think and feel? What's the one thing? Because if we are all connected in the microcosm of who we are, then that one small thing could have huge dramatic impact. I also think that a detox needs to be personalized and I'm going to talk about how I do that specifically. We live in the age of personalized medicine and we are getting more and more to the, the place of personalized nutrition. We're getting more tools to do that. And you know, as I've been alluding to, as you can see, I'm a big fan of connecting the, the mind and the body that these two things are not separate. In fact, I think we're much more than the mind and body. So, uh, in my whole interest of looking at ancient traditions, Ayurvedic medicine, uh, Tibetan medicine, different forms of medicine in Asia, what I've noticed is that they have this connection to the endocrine system. And even in functional medicine, we have this connection to what Dr. Bland would call the HPATG axis hypothalamus, pituitary, thyroid, uh, adrenal, gonadal access. So essentially um, these endocrine glands, there are seven of them that we focus on. So again, the magic seven appears again. And each of them uh, are connected to something symbolic. So they're not just physiologic, they're psychologic in, in their, uh, what they bring forward. And I like focusing on the endocrine glands because if you look at a lot of the literature on toxicity, one of the first systems to be impacted is the endocrine system. You know, why are they called endocrine disruptors, a lot of these chemicals? Because they're disrupting the endocrine system. Now, um, there are a couple of others. So the, the adrenals, of course, the ovaries, testes, pancreas is a large endocrine gland that, of course, oversees our digestive system. The heart, many people would not consider the heart as an endocrine gland, but it is. There is, um, I have some, some papers, some citations in my whole detox book where I talk about the heart as a neuroendocrine organ, that it releases different hormones into the bloodstream. So, and then of course thyroid and pituitary, pituitary is seen as the master gland of many of these other glands, and the pineal gland which regulates light. So what I did was I took these endocrine glands, I correlated them to color, and then I took the, the colors and for each one, I segment into the, the body parts, the lifestyle issues, and foods. So it all came out like this, <laughs> into the seven systems of health. Of course, this, this one slide took a lot, this took years uh, to come to. I, I didn't just process all of uh, what, what I just said so easily. Uh, but again, this is very much a fusion of science and, and uh, really ancient healing traditions. And if you look at the top of this, this table, you'll see the, I have little uh, symbols for each in, in names, as well as the color for each of the endocrine glands, connecting that to the larger anatomical systems and physiology. Then what are the core issues? The more the symbolic, psychological core issues that connect. If we looked at life metaphorically, how would it look? And then the foods that connect in. So this chart is actually in the whole detox book in this color. Uh, you can also download it from my website, one of my websites. Um, you can go to deannaminick.com. You can just download it. Uh, it looks a little bit different on that site, um, but essentially you can get a copy for yourself and, and use it as you'd like. So one of the things that I do in order to personalize the detox, and you know that Everybody likes to know about how what, what they are working with because not everybody is the same that goes through the process, right? So what I talk about is what is your spectrum type? Where do you need balance? And of course, we have all these seven things within us. We have all these endocrine glands. We have all the symbology. But sometimes things are not all harmonious. So what I have folks do before they enter into the detox is they do the spectrum quiz and you can do this too. You just go to whole-detox.com and then you look at the, the little tab up at the top and you see where it says quiz. It's free. You can just go in. It's going to take you some time to do it though. It takes about 
I would say when I, when I do it, it takes me about 15 to 20 minutes. It's quite lengthy. It's not a short quiz. And when you're done, you'll get this. This will be your result, and you can print it off. So you see all the different colors, all the different systems. The highest number is the, the system that is most out of balance. So you can see here that uh, in this case, I think I did this some time ago. So this is me. I was out of balance with my fire system, which is more digestive, more about transformation, doing too much. And most people are, actually. This is the, the number one system that people come into the detox with, with really this, this strong imbalance. And then what you'll get to the right is this radar graph. And the closer your points are to the middle, that shows that you're in the state of health. So you can see that the fire point, which is off to about 3 o'clock or 4 o'clock, that's way away from the center, right? So, so that's how I personalize the detox. I help people to um, first assess where they need to be. And as we go through the program, there are days where we focus on on these different systems and then I ask them to pay even more attention to where they have imbalances. Now I, I talk about the different types of people and, and some of us just naturally gravitate to being a certain type even though we have all seven of these elements within us I can spot a root type a mile away <laughs> you know um, and of course there are kind of the positive attributes, things that are very redeeming and, and very enlightening about that, that system. And then there are other things on the other side of the spectrum which are very negative, right? It's just like anything in life. It's the yin and the yang. So you can have a flow type who is somebody that's very creative, very expressive, very emotional. But on the, the downside, it could be somebody that is just kind of wallowing in all of their emotions. So they have a lot of emotional baggage and toxicity around that. They can be very dramatic and, and really their emotions can be toxic barriers because they're, they're being impeded by their emotions rather than feeling like they're flowing with their emotions. So we talk about that. We talk about how all these different systems manifest in our lives. So what I'm going to do is quickly tour you through, and I mean quick, because <laughs> the book really goes into much greater detail, but I wanted you to get a sense of when we do a whole detox program, what do each of these systems of health, when they are imbalanced, what do they look like in a patient? So first we have the root. And uh, by the way, all these colorful inserts are also in the whole detox book. So you can use this as kind of a, a sheet to help you remember what everything is, is connected to. So the root is the color red. It's about things that are grounding, our defense system, our adrenals. We think of fight or flight, okay? So this is all about survival. So, and I also, by the way, see a lot of people in the detox that have an imbalanced root, a lot. You know, that's up there with fire. Um, and so these folks tend to have a lot of immune issues, like autoimmune disease. They tend to have a lot of inflammation. They have a, adrenal fatigue. They have a lot of stress, just in general. And that stress is primarily... It's either around their home, their finances, or their family. And those are all very root-like topics. You know, the root part of us is, is really our ancestry, our family, what we connect to in our identity. So for some folks, you know, they, um, you know, they feel challenged that they don't really have that supportive community. And that in and of itself can be very toxic to one's decisions and such. The flow. I've already kind of given you an idea of the flow. Uh, this is the color orange. And you'll find, I know that you'll find this pretty curious, that I do a bit of the science of color in the whole detox book. So with red, I talk about how eating from red plates, typically you eat less than if you ate from a white or a blue plate. There's some science on that. The color orange is very interesting. I wasn't sure what I would find when I started looking into the science on orange. But in the animal kingdom, the color orange is connected to mating behavior. Uh, and we see that a lot in fish, in guppies, there are some studies. And you also see it in birds, showing a lot of high carotenoid plumage when they're ready to mate. So the flow is all about that sense of creative expression in us. And we can take that literally and talk about the reproductive tract. We can also talk about it symbolically. Are we creative in our thinking or in our living? Um, and I talk here, when, when we talk about food, I talk about the things 
that are in our diets that help us to flow. So things like fats and oils, which coincidentally are connected to reproductive health. It's almost like each of these are their own little web. They're all very metaphorical and, and science-based in how they're connected. And it's just that you know I'm, I'm creating those links just to see them uh, in terms of uh, personalities and, and people and what we need to really work with. So a person with an imbalanced flow, water issues, swelling issues, any kind of issues with fat, so too little fat, fat phobia, I've seen a lot of that, uh, difficulty with um, creative relationships, intimate relationships, instead of the community like the root is focused on, this is focused on more uh, a relationship with one other person. And there, here's where we talk a lot about emotional eating in the detox. Uh, and some of the data, in, and I like to collect data before and after. I did a very large detox program with the help of the Institute for Functional Medicine. We had seven, close to 700 people fill out questionnaires before and after. We found that emotional eating was the thing that people improved most on. Now, when you go into a detox, it's probably not something that you might even be thinking about. And for many people, I don't think that they were initially thinking of it, but then they realized how much their flow system was toxic and really needed a lot of healing. The fire, this is a big one. The color yellow, it's right there in the solar plexus where we burn bright. We've got our digestive fire uh, through our stomach, our stomach acid. Here we talk about carbohydrates and yellow foods. Well, we've had too many carbohydrates in our diet for, for some of us, right? A lot of these processed ones that are, in fact, very yellow. <laughs> so it's not always that we need more of these colors. Sometimes we need less. So I talk about some interesting uh, research in the book uh, on job-related stress because this is really the center of, of work-life balance, how we take things in and transform them. So somebody who's really fiery uh, is going to be somebody that's an overachiever but they're overachieving to their detriment. You know, they really need to just be de-stressed and get their blood sugar balanced and feel good in their gut and not have indigestion. So this is, again, when I have done surveys for people, I have found that 80% of people that do the spectrum quiz have a problem in their fire. If it's not the primary one, it's, it's one of the secondary ones. The fourth one is the love. And the love is uh, up in the heart, and it's ooh, it's all about the color green. Let me just go back there. Uh, it aligns to vegetables, so green leafy vegetables. We talk about the heart and cardiovascular system. We talk about the lungs, everything that's up in that upper chest area, right? And we also talk about things like forgiveness and gratitude and how healing those things can be, uh, in addition to incorporating movement. Every day of the whole detox program, uh, people have a movement activity. So they're, they're guaranteed even just a couple of minutes of getting some, some oxygenation and some movement in there. So somebody, and, and this is another big one, especially for all the working moms and the single moms who are out there trying to do it all, uh, where they just don't have the time to, to actually uh, just to do any self-care practices. So these folks tend to have a lot of emotional trauma, uh, maybe difficulty with forgiveness, lots of grief. Um, I, I have also found, interestingly, in my clinical observation, these folks uh, tend not to eat a lot of green vegetables. They almost avoid them, specifically. The truth is the next one, and the truth correlates to the thyroid. So now we're up in the throat. We focus here on sea plants things that lubricate the throat, so fruits like melons, and um, I focus on a lot of the, the liquid foods, so smoothies and soups and sauces and broths and stews and teas, and all of these are really wonderful for a detox anyway, so a lot of these formats of food are already incorporated into the recipes for the program. So here I talk about how we speak our truth, and so I, I've already talked about that a little bit, um, and, and which choices we make, how authentic are we, and how, how well do we track to our personal truths. So, you know, just even looking at the, the physiology of the lips, are, are our lips cracked, do we have a sore throat, you know, what's going on in that area? I think it's, um, it's a very interesting one to look at, and people really like this one. It's a difficult one 
because it brings up a lot of issues for folks. Um, but uh, once they they embrace it and and realize what's going on, they shine a lot of light on on a lot of healing for themselves. The insight. Now the insight is indigo. A lot of eyes here, and it even correlates with the eyes, the physical eyes. And in ancient medicine, the pituitary gland is referred to as the third eye. You know, if you look at where the pituitary gland sits, it's right in the middle of the head. So if you were to draw a line out to the forehead, it would be right there in, in the middle of the forehead, essentially, a little bit lower between the brows. So we've got that, that pituitary gland, which um, is, being that it is the master, and, and in fact, this is the gland that in several traditions people meditate on because it has so much power and, and strength. And, you know, it's really signaling on to all these other organs. So I look at it not just um, for, for that, but I, I connect it to the other eye of intuition, the other eye of imagination, the other eye of intellect. You know, it's right in the brain region. So we talk a lot about uh, how how we are in our thinking when we get to this point. And as I mentioned before, talking about visualizations. And in fact, a lot of people come into the detox because they have thinking and brain fog issues. So this is a common one uh, for, usually a secondary one for many people, where you know they're just kind of grappling with not sleeping well, food addictions, they just feel kind of shut off in their mind. They don't feel as connected to being able to focus and concentrate. The last one is the spirit. And the spirit's color is white. And so it's all the white foods, not the, uh, the bleached <laughs> sugar and, and flour, but the natural foods that are very important for purification and clarification, which is what the spirit is about. So here is where in the program I have people do a little bit of just pulling back from food so I've tailored the recipes in the whole detox book so that people don't have as much, uh, j just not as much in the way of calories. And I have recipes like the divine broth, which is just a simple broth, not a lot of calories. Um, and, and people like this. You know, it's kind of nice because it's on the tail end. So we end on the weekend and they have the time and the space to kind of pull back from, from food and, and, and really just focus on other things focus on their sense of meaning and purpose. So a person with an imbalanced spirit may feel, as you might assume, a lack of connection, lacking faith in just living in general, lacking purpose, doesn't see the greater meaning, might feel cut off or, or just kind of lost, lonely, detached from the body. Well, you know, um, we, we just have a couple of minutes here. So, you know, in general, the, the whole detox program has the, the seven toxins, seven glands, seven systems of health, and then the seven features. <laughs> so another seven. So every day of the program, and this is again outlined in the whole detox book, you have a something that you're going to eat that day that's loaded with the color that you're we're focusing on. Then you've got the emotion log, limiting thought exercise, some kind of movement, an affirmation to say, visualization and meditation. Now for some people they look at this and they think, oh my goodness, how am I ever going to do all of this um, every day? The, the total amount of time that it really takes to do these things from flow to spirit is, is really, I, I, I calculated the amount of time and it's, it's about 30 minutes a day and that does not include the recipe prep. So if you can't do everything every day, you know, it's fine. You know, maybe you just want to focus on the meal plans. And again, I focus a lot on the color and uh, there, there's good reason why I do because of the different phytonutrients and how do we get color from all the different foods in nature. I, I do a lot with spices. And yes, of course, I bring in you know what people need to avoid when they go through the program as well. But really and truly, um, I remember one woman saying, Deanna, I've done so many different detox programs, but with your program, my migraines are, they've gone away. Do you think it's because of all the color? which I thought was just a hoot, you know, that I, and it, it caused me to pause because I don't know, you know, all the colorful foods that we eat and all of our focus on color maybe had something to do with the fact that she got rid of her lifelong migraines. I'm not sure. Um, but, you know, good nutrition is essential. We cannot uh, leave that out and I don't leave that out in whole detox. 
I do focus a lot on plants, and I bring in, um, you know, the, the plant foods within the recipes and, and talk about why they're so important. The emotion log, I mentioned how people clip through their different emotions. The limiting thoughts, this is a lot of journaling. So some, well, not a lot. It's, it's a journaling activity that people do. The movement, and again, I sprinkle in lots of different things because not everything will call to everybody in the same way. So there are different choices. I also have affirmations, things that we say or that affirm something positive. And if uh, I like when people say them, but I also like when they're written and we put them in our environment. Visualizations, so having some kind of guided imagery. And uh, that, that's, again, it's really powerful. It's more powerful than you think. And then the final one is, is the meditation. And that's also written out in the whole detox book. So I'm going to close um, on this slide um, by, by really, again, just focusing on saying how important it is to look at all the layers of who you are. You know, you're much more than this physical body. The physical body is incredibly important and indicative of all the other layers and what's going on. So with whole detox, what I feel like we've been able to do is to create a system, a very practical way to move people through the system and you know I, I've got a number you know I've had hundreds and hundreds at, at this time you know thousands of people that have gone through the program and lots of great great um, case studies uh, my father has gone through the program uh, a little bit reluctantly at first but had some tremendous pain relief uh, lost a lot of weight went off of one of his blood pressure lowering meds uh, there's another woman who went through the program and ended up getting pregnant when she didn't think she could get pregnant. And, you know, just so many other life stories um, about shifts in life that could have never been otherwise planned, I think. You know, it's not like we sit there in our, with our to-do list and say, okay, I'm going to quit my job or I'm going to move to a different country or, you know, they might be percolating within us. And I think that what happens in this magical way within Whole Detox is that those things are brought to the surface in a, a really easy, seamless way that's, that's very supported by the community. So thank you all. And uh, I do want to mention, too, that the whole detox book is, is currently available. Feel free to, to look at the website, whole-detox, and, and uh, you know, do the quiz. Do the quiz and see how you head out, too. Thank you, Dr. Minnick. Thank you. Absolutely. Um, I, I appreciated the, the testimonials um, of the program and what people actually experience because I, it, it's just not my experience that that takes place in, in um, more let's say, modern kind of detoxes where you just are focusing on one part and doing some powders or something. You don't have these kind of insights that come up as, as you do in a whole detox. So mm -hmm. it, it's, it, it can be really um, a huge wake up and, and life transformative for people. Yeah, absolutely. You had mentioned um, an article that you'd written, and um, if you get me the, the details for that, um, if you think it would be appropriate, we can attach it to this webinar so attendees have it when they go into the, the archives. Yes, I will do that. Um, and again, it's a 24-page review article. It's it's on nutrition and detoxification, so it's very specific to the different nutrients, looking at the cell studies, animal studies, and clinical trials on the different pathways, you know, and, and how we can upregulate and be very supportive nutritionally for those processes. So I will definitely get that to you. Okay. And um, detoxigenomics, I, I love that you put in, I've certainly seen it. Um, it when the first time I saw it, it's like, oh, that's got to be a, a Jeff Bland term. <laughs> <laughs> it just so it, it would come from him if it it, it hasn't, but <laughs> no, actually, you know, it's so funny though because he wrote in the forward and, and for whole detox. I think his word was ultra detox. It was, it was something he brought in the toxicity aspect. It was this big long word, mm -hmm. and even my publisher said, "Deanna, that's that's not a word." And I said, "Believe me, you don't know Jeff Bland. He's." <laughs> He creates these words. He's a synthesizer. It's a beautiful <laughs> word. <laughs> and, and it's an honor to have a, a new term in your book. So. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. 
Um, you talked about the um, um, personalizing spectrum and taking the quiz. Do you find that um, you know people are going to come out with a primary spectrum, but can there be several? <laughs> can you do that yes. out of balance? That like they yeah. all show up? Yeah, and, and there are two ways to, to assess the questionnaire results. One way is just looking at the quantitative results. So you'll see at the end when you do it, um, if there are any that are above the number 15, then those are very much out of balance. Now, for some people, like when I showed my result, I didn't have any that were over 15, but I was looking at them in relation to one another. Then I would just stack them and look at the top three. And, and that's how I coach folks going through the detox. Look at your top three. And, and sometimes, you know, just what is the story? What is the connection between having a root, a fire, and a love balance? You know, why, why would that happen? And then, uh, you know, typically I have them focus on the, the, uh, the system that's first appearing, you know. Uh, so, you know, the one that's the highest going from there. And oftentimes that can take care of some of the other imbalances too. Sure. Okay, some more questions. Um, if someone gets really nauseous after doing a vigorous workout, like they're really sweating hard, um, could the um, sick feeling be driven by the body trying to detox? It might, uh, and, and by, you know, by way of detoxing when we're releasing all of the, the sweat, we're also releasing precious electrolytes, so things that we need like magnesium and potassium. Mm -hmm. So if somebody is dis dizzy or nauseous, it could also mean that we're losing some, some important minerals, and those do come out in sweat, and they have to be repleted. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a, be an interesting you know, question. It's, it, it's, a, it's a great point of view, and if they actually feel better after they start you know, drinking and, and eating some afterwards would be very telling for that. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, don't go into a sauna uh, or, or be sweating if you're not properly hydrated and at least have a little bit, eat within the hour before you um, start doing lots of sweating so that at least, you know, something small so that you have uh, stable blood sugar so it's not your blood sugar dropping because you're, you know, when you're in these saunas and sweating, metabolism uh, is, is very high. And it can be sustained even when you come out of the of being in a sauna. Yeah. So you know, you, you, it could be low blood sugar that's making somebody nauseous or dizzy. So you, you know, just keep that in mind too. It could be a number of different things. Yeah, I think it's an important um, recommendation. I, I often hear to exercise before sauna, but um, dehydration is is often a a factor in. So. Oh yeah, definitely. Mm hmm. And you know, with sauna, um, I don't know if you've seen the um, with the far infrared saunas that are out. They have near infrared sauna now. That's the newest technology. Have you seen those? I have. Uh, I can't speak to the intricacies of all the different types of sauna. Um, at least on the 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 infrared side, I do like the infrared because if you there aren't a lot of studies on infrared relative to the traditional dry heat sauna, but with the infrared, it just seems like a person can tolerate the heat better. I hear a lot of positive remarks from from that. So I don't know with a near infrared how that differs from just a traditional infrared. But perhaps there's you know different spectra of light are going to do different things in the body. Sure. And the temperature is very different. You know, in a far infrared, you're looking at 100, 110 degree temperature versus 180 to 200 in a more traditional sauna. Right. So that might play a part of it too. Okay. On um, um, if we're working with a client, can we help them effectively if they have SNPs in phase one and phase two detox pathways? Yes, definitely. You know, um, in functional medicine, we talk all about um, what we call bifunctional modulation. So balancing phase one and phase two. And for most people, they don't have it balanced. Sometimes there's too much phase one, which creates a lot of free radicals, and not enough phase two, where we need the protein and the other conjugating factors to get those things out of the body. So yeah, it, it can definitely be done through um, nutrition. Good quality protein, uh, looking at antioxidants, different um, certain actives like um, green tea or pomegranate actually do both things. They, they do phase one and phase two. 
So you'll read about that in the article that um, the, the review article that was published. I go into that a bit more extensively. Thank you. Um, and another question is on the uh, your seven points um, seem to be aligned with the seven chakra points. Is this um, spiritual connection discussed more detail in your in your book? Do you make that connection? Um, it, it is a, definitely it originates from the the chakra system, uh, which I was introduced to when I started taking yoga many many years ago and started reading more about it and read some books from Carolyn Mace. Um, I don't talk chakras specifically in the book because I've talked about chakras in other books that I've written like Chakra Foods. Mm -hmm. um, I have another book called Quantum Supplements where I talk about chakras. So with this one it's it's just much more about what I call the systems of health. You know these comprehensive they're, they're not actually the, the chakras anymore because they've morphed to include a number of different things. So um, you know my, my origins are very uh, broad in terms of looking at ancient traditions and then marrying that to the science, but I would say it's not in the traditional form that it was discussed way back when. Okay. I, I just want to close with um, an, an appreciation for your approach to, det to, to detoxification, for redefining and reclaiming the word and putting it in a positive light and, and bringing it back to a whole perspective. Thank well, you I. Well, thank you for acknowledging that. I, I hope that we can all be bearers of uh, continuing to fight the good fight of detox. And I think as long as we know our facts, that it's much more sophisticated than just thinking of drinking lemon juice and water and sitting in a sauna. You know, it's it's um, actually a very complex science. And so I think once people understand that, then they say, oh, I, I get it, genetic variability. And, you know, we're not all identical. We do live in different places with different exposures. You know that that is that's really key. Thank you. All right, I want to let everybody know that we recorded this, and I'm glad there's good information to refer to again. And and if you know somebody that might benefit from this, um, it'll it'll be up on our website in a few days, and it's free, it's available. Take advantage of that whenever you can. Um, and I hope we've inspired you to learn more about health and nutrition. We've got some great programs, some great classes. Um, if you'd like to talk about it or review anything from our website, um, take a look. And Kathy McDermott's our Director of Admissions. She's available anytime. And a reminder that there's a survey to fill out after the webinar ends and that Dr. Minnick has generously offered a copy of, of Whole Detox book as well as um, the free and, uh, registration into the 21-day detox program starting March 17th. So take advantage of that and let us know what you'd like to hear more about in upcoming webinars too. Uh, and for our next webinar, we are back on February 2nd. We have Hawthorne's doctoral graduate Elizabeth Naylor with us and she's going to continue on the detox theme. Um, she's working a lot. Uh, she's worked a lot with detoxification and helping women that have had um, have babies and want to have a their experience as a mother once they're all burnt out and <laughs> and their adrenals are trashed from not sleeping and everything. So this approach is um, detoxification to prepare for healthy pregnancy, birth, baby, and mothering. So we're kind of stacking the odds in favor of a vibrant mom and vibrant baby here. So I hope you'll join us for that. We'll um, that's at four o'clock on the. Um, February 5th, on March 15th. We'll start at 3.50 with some announcements and um, I hope you join it for that. And a reminder that tomorrow, Wednesday uh, at noon, we're airing live for the All of Our Alumni series where we got Katie Carter talking about what she's doing post-graduation, things she's learned along the way, challenges she's faced and successes she's had and, and new ideas she's got coming out. So tune in for that. Um, and we'll be back here in a couple weeks. Until then, I wish you all the best of health and hope you take care and take care of each other too. Bye for now.